the most requested video I've had since the M1 iPads came in. Can you use the cheapest, well, cheap is a relative term, right? The cheapest 11 inch M1 iPad Pro is your only video editing computer? Let's find out. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. So yes, yesterday we released the video about the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, and in the comments of that video, all of you requested the 11 inch version, so let's get right to it. To answer that question, obviously, yes. We've been making this series of videos for years now. Every time there's a new iPad Pro that comes out, we kind of update, can you use it as a video editing computer? Because iPads are exceedingly powerful, but sometimes they get a bad rap as a content creation device. So I like proving the naysayers wrong, and we're gonna do that again here today. So one of the things about the new iPad Pro is I do think the display itself is really important. It's not the mini LED like on the 12.9 inch, but again, we're gonna use the camera to record the screen instead of my normal external device and I have already paired my handy dandy magic keyboard and magic mouse to my iPad Pro, so let's get to it. This is the absolute cheapest one you can get, base model with eight gigabytes of RAM, so let's start the editing. Now one of the hiccups you'll have to overcome if you're gonna use an iPad Pro as your video editing computer is you will need to work your, like you'll have to arrange your brain around the iPad OS file system. Now we already transferred the files over so as not to like waste everybody's time today, but one of the things, I just wanna show you how it works if you did not watch yesterday's video. So you can always get the SD card dongle, then you come over to files and you can see I use the files for my Lumix S5 but I already moved all the files over here it's the files from the unboxing video for the smallest iPad Pro and that we did you can see all the stuff over here so if I want to move this whole file you know we move choose LumaFusion so one of the things that I don't like about using iPad is now that we're transferring the files how far how much time's left is it working who knows that's the only notification you get I hate that so much. So yeah, that is one of the wonkiness you'll have to deal with if you're going to use an iPad. Now you may be asking yourself, Gary, Everyday Dad Man, hey, why are you even talking about this right now? That's not video editing. Well, false. Video editing is in three parts. There's the processing, the editing, and then the rendering. Processing, like your file workflow, is absolutely a part of the game. So like I said, we've got everything saved on here already. Now the app that I'll be using today is an app called LumaFusion. It is a paid app, and no, LumaFusion is not sponsoring today's video. However, it's the mobile video editor that I found that has features very similar to like Final Cut Pro, which I use on my computer. So let's get over here. We will create, we already kind of created a test to see how everything would work, but we'll do cheapest iPad video editing video, no confusion. That's how we, you know, you got to label your video files as confusingly as possible, or how are you going to know whether you did it right or not? Okay, no, we do not want to see the tutorial. So we will do the main shot and the overhead shot for the unboxing video, we'll edit them together. We won't do the whole video because everybody's got stuff to do today. We'd not just watch me edit a video. So let's get it all together. I do very much enjoy being able to use touchscreen. Oh, there's my PJs. You caught me in my PJs uh, for that part of the video. But I do very much enjoy using these touchscreens when I can for video editing because it just makes it really easy. Like, look how easy it is to just sync up the audio. Sometimes this can be a huge pain in the butt. Test one, two, three, audio test. It's a little off. Let's move it over just a little bit more. Test one, two, three. There we go. That's pretty good. So audio is synced up. Very good. Now let's get into the actual like color processing, all of the stuff that we'll have to go. Now, one of the cool things about LumaFusion is, like we said in yesterday's video, you can add your own LUTs and color stuff. So let's actually, we'll do the audio next. Let's do the positioning first. Let's rotate you over 180 degrees so you are the right way around because we all like, you know, I like when the overhead shot makes you kind of feel like you're there. So it's actually recorded upside down compared to what you normally see, but there, we got it. Looks pretty good. Let's go back, whoops. Gary, you totally messed up right there. Okay, let's come over here. We'll add the original layer. Now when you add the original layer, what that does is it allows you access to like the normal kinds of updates. So let's come over here. We actually need to download a LUT. Files, nicest, boom. Nicest is not just, I don't call it, hey, this is the nicest LUT. That's what Lumix calls it in their very cam line, and I use Vlog on all the Lumix cameras, so I use their nicest LUT uh, for that. So we've done our transform LUT. Now let's go back over to the original. We'll add just a 
tiny bit of contrast, a tiny bit of saturation. And does that look? That looks a little dark, so we'll uh, we'll bump up the brightness just a little bit. We gotta go back over here to crop, so we'll crop in just a little bit so that it's a little more centered to the frame. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. So the top is processed, I like that. So let's go to the main shot here. Look at that handsome devil. I'm looking at the monitor uh, over there. But yeah, you can see, you see how all of this is like, looks gray? That's because I shoot in what's called log, which is a very flat picture profile. It just lets you save a lot of information in the file and it lets you tweak it a little bit more um, after the fact. So let's go ahead and process this too. We will also do original. We will also do nicest because it's shot in the exact same way. Come back over to original, a little bit of contrast. A little bit of saturation, and I think that looks pretty darn good. The only thing I really don't like about LumaFusion is it doesn't have the kinds of like monitors that I normally use. While I'm editing this video right now, I'll have a waveform up just showing me like how the skin tones look, how the background looks, because um, you can never really trust your eyes because every monitor looks different. So when you see a waveform, you can really say, okay, that is where my luminance levels are. Now I've seen rumors and pictures that LumaFusion may be getting this in the future, hopefully soon, but that's one of the negatives if you're downloading this today that you will have. So we've processed the image on both files. Let's, we'll turn off the audio on this clip. There we go. So we only have the one layer of audio. Two, three, audio test one. Two. Okay, and the speakers sound really good too. Can you hear that? I think we're all the way up. Can you? Three. Not only is there a very big that's version, good. Not only Ooh, Gary only Gary already messed up on there. We'll pretend. Maybe we'll edit this so that you didn't have to hear that mistake. Okay, so that sounds really good. It looks really good, but let's do one little another cool thing about this is you can see all the audio processing we can do. Uh, now I'm not gonna do very many of these. I'm not gonna do a filter or delay or anything like that. I may drop the gain down just a little bit to cover up any noise that we might have had in the video because I use a, a dynamic microphone without like a dynamic professional preamp. Power adapter, it says 20 watt right there, 20W. Okay, that sounds fantastic. It looks good, it sounds good. That only took like a couple of minutes, right? We've, we've only been doing this for a few minutes now and we are already ready to go, which is impressive. Okay, so let's go back over here to the beginning. We screwed up here somewhere, I remember. Not only is there a mini LED version of... Not only... <laughs> wow, look at... See? Look, uh, you all are like, Gary, you make this look so easy. Uh, but sometimes we truly, like, mess up a whole bunch. You just saw we had to cut, like, seven bad takes in there. Uh, so never think that you're screwing up on YouTube because somebody that's been doing it for four years, you just saw that kind of craziness. Okay, so I do think that is where we'll stop. So we'll do this so that we can do the intro. Not only is there a much bigger mini LED version of the iPad, there's also what I would consider to be probably the most useful. The most useful. Version okay, so that looks pretty good. So we'll come over here. Let's find out. Let's find out. Okay, we'll come over here to. What's up? What's up? Okay, we'll cut to the what's up because I like the jump. I think it's a little funnier when we're like, let's find out. What's up, everyone? Boom. There we go. Now that does make it a little harder to cut the intro when the intro is so quick. So we'll do a little bit more so you can see the interaction between the two files. Get right. Okay, so figured out. Zoom in. And if I can figure. If I can figure it out right there. If I can figure it out, you. Whoop! Nope. Sorry. Whoop. You can figure it out. You can figure it out, and when you are figuring it out, we actually crop in on that for emphasis for emphasis so that everybody actually knows that look it's not just Gary that can do this everybody can do this okay does it look does it look good you can figure it out so mm. let's not skip around. that looks let's pretty good we actually need to have the transition over here something i forgot right now what's up every okay so let's add a transition right here add transition so we'll come over here to the transition file let's do i like doing push so we'll push left and then can we see it right here? Find out. What's up? Yep, but it's too slow. Gary likes it real quick. I like it quick. We do it normally 0.04. There you go, 0.04. Out. What's up, everyone? Boom. That looks good. All right, the editing's going great. One thing, I mean, have you seen any slowdowns? Have you seen any hiccups? This is H.265 files from the Lumix S5. That's what I shoot in now. Um, but I haven't seen any slowdowns or any stutters. Same. This is playing back incredibly well.
incredibly well. Okay, so I think we've shown that we can process the files. We've shown how easy it is to cut the files. You know, we could drag this out and get a whole lot of, you know, get a much longer video, but we're not gonna do that for you all today because uh, that's boring. I don't like watching videos like that either. So let's cut this up a little bit, make it a little more challenging for the processor when we go through to do our editing. So we'll cut that, cut that. Now we'll leave that one in. We'll cut this one and then we'll cut this last one. So we'll take a five minute video clip of both files, we'll render it out and just see how long it takes. Now it took about three minutes on the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. So let's see if this is any faster or this is any slower. We'll get our handy dandy stopwatch. Let's see here. I just had it, it still had the time from the last one which was two minutes and 54 seconds. So we will share as a movie, we'll just share straight to files you can see all of our settings here. We'll go down to standard because that's more like what you'll get out of a more traditional video editing. I mean, look at all this craziness. We got to ultra 150 megabits per second. No platform is going to take that. The web, look, web says 12 megabits per second. I'll stick for the purpose of this video. We'll stick with 50, even though I think 25 is more realistic, but we want to put this to the paces. We don't just want to like ease out of it. Like we could put it to the lowest quality and show like, hey, look how fast it is. But we'll keep on that. You can see we were using HEVC footage. We'll export this as a .mp4 because that's what I normally use. It will come out as 1.43 gigabytes. So let's get set, go. Okay, there we go. You can see how fast it's actually writing. We're just a little bit faster than real time now. Well, it's kind of picking up. It's kind of picking up. As much as I love staring at these and seeing the comparison, I'm not gonna make you do that. So we'll be back in just one second to show you how long it actually took. Okay, you can see we're just about done. As soon as we render, we'll hit the stop button. Boom, 250, almost the exact same. That might've been, I mean, we were within a second of the 11 inch iPad and the 12.9 inch iPad. So it's the same processor, the same computer. So not very shocking, but look at that. This is way cheaper and you get the same performance. So yeah, two minutes and 54 seconds. It's almost twice real time. That's fantastic performance. However, to answer the question at the beginning of the video, could you use the brand new cheapest M1 iPad Pro as your only video editing computer? Yeah, you just saw it did perfectly fine. It does well in two parts of video editing. It does really well in editing and it does really well in rendering. The problem you're gonna run into is processing, having to deal with the iPad OS file system, but if that's something that you already do and you're used to it, absolutely you can use the M1 iPad Pro as your only video editing computer. We just proved that today, it's so good. I love doing these videos. And if you like this video, you're now curious about the 11 inch cheapest iPad Pro, you can find my video unboxing it and all the cool stuff that comes with it by clicking right here. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.